Hi, it's Anna Mason and in this watercolour tip video I wanted to show you how I painted this vase with its water and stems by breaking it down into a series of shapes of colour. I worked from a photo which captured a perfect snapshot of how light fell on the vase. It was really important to get the drawing right. I've used my pencil lightly and I've marked out all of the shapes which have hard line edges to them. So that's the large shapes at the edges, the line around the surface of the water and all of the narrow curved lines at the bottom and the top of the vase. It's really important that we get those very small shapes in just the right places because they inform us of the way that light was falling on the glass and being refracted, which is what gives it its curved appearance. I began painting, as I always do, by working on the lightest tone areas within the vase, the greys to the surface of the water and in the edge of the shadow as it transitions into the white background. I mixed a super watery light grey and applied this colour into all the grey areas, even those that will need to be much darker. With that dry, I mixed a slightly less watery darker grey mix and applied it to the next darkest grey shapes within the vase. This allows me to start to make sense of my drawing and see which areas should have colour and which should be left without paint. Next I painted the shapes of a greyish green colour with another pale watery mix, this time adding a touch of some yellow paint to my grey mix. All the time I'm using one of my smallest brushes because the shapes of colour are so small and I want to remain within my pencil lines. Next I mapped out the very vibrant greens in the stems by using a watery version of that colour, using plenty of yellow in my mix. Because it's so pale I can apply it into all of the green areas, even the parts that will need to be a darker green, changing my mix to contain a little bit less yellow as I'm working into some much darker areas so that it's easier to see what colours should go where. With all the lightest colours in place I could switch my attention to the darkest colours, beginning with the very darkest greys which I placed carefully, again with a small brush. I watered the mix down a little to work into those areas just a little lighter, always paying really close attention to the reference photo to make sure I was painting the right shapes of colour in the right places. Next I worked on the darkest greens in the green stems, followed by the darker mid-tones, then the mid-mid-tones, layering up the paint wherever I saw needed darkening further with this mix. Then with those mid-tones painted it was easier to judge which other areas should be darker and I went into the tonal adjustment phase of the painting, really comparing my painting to the reference photo and looking for any areas to darken with another layer of the right colour mix. This is also the stage I add a further level of detail as I really hone in and see the very smallest shapes of colour and look to get them in the right place. Spending the time on getting the vase looking right can really add the wow factor to a bigger painting of flowers like this one I did. A full video class of this vase is available now in my online school. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'd love it if you'd share it with your friends. And if you'd like to take one of my tried and tested video classes for free, hop on over to animasonart.com where you'll find even more resources to help you pick up your brush and paint the way you've always wanted to. Remember, you won't improve your painting unless you make the time to paint, so be sure to schedule in some me time this week and paint something just for you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon to help you create watercolours with WOW. Trust in me, just in me. <laughs> no, maybe not. <laughs>